so it's cool. All right, I'm not going to give a presentation. That's interesting. I'm just, you guys can just like, I'll just argue with everybody. <laughs> um, I, was, I have strong opinions about some things, and I was expressing those opinions earlier today. Which things? Uh, our spec today. Okay. That's what I'm talking about right now. <laughs> but I have lots of other opinions. If you like to hear them, then you can buy me a beer or something. Uh, so I, I don't, I, uh, well, okay. Here, let everybody put your hand up. Just to make sure that your hands work. Just everybody, there's over there. You too. Yeah. Okay. Good. Now, ready? Who uses our spec? And uh, who likes our spec? Uh, well, I, I haven't used unit testing, so yeah, I, don't, yeah. I don't know what to compare it to. All right. Now, so my question is, how many people use our spec because it was already there when you started on the project? Yeah. Or because somebody just told you to use it and you're like, whatever. Yeah. So I think our spec sucks. <laughs> <laughs> and I hate it. Um, then you hate us too. <laughs> no. No, I love all you guys. I hate our spec. So I guess we just answered those questions. So that's cool. Um, I know some people. Does anybody want to say why they like our spec? You had something that you just said. I like mocks and stubs. Okay. Good. I like that it's got good documentation. There's a lot of people that are using it. It seems like you can, you know, if you use it, you can get the testing that you need to get done. It's not necessarily <laughs> the best. You could probably pick and choose from other things. But it seems like you can get done what you need to get done from testing. Yeah. So problems I've had with it um, are that by default, it doesn't show you a stack trace when something blows up which is just stupid. I mean, what, really? I have to give it a command line flag to get to see a stack trace? That's just stupid, I'm sorry. That's, that's, don't hit it. Like, you, you run Ruby, a Ruby script, if it dies, it'll show you a stack trace. That's how Ruby works, but our spec does it not out of the box. You've gotta say dash B for it to give you a back trace. Um, that's one reason I hate it. <laughs> uh, you have to load, if you're using our spec, on a Rails project, you got to get the RSpec gem, and then you got to get the RSpec Rails gem, and then when Rails gets a new update, you got to wait for the RSpec Rails gem to get an update. Otherwise, Bundler will complain that it's not working. So that always pisses me off. Uh, that one time that I was on that project with Edge Rails, like half the time we couldn't upgrade until somebody released a patch for RSpec Rails for Edge Rails to work. And that was just a complete nightmare. Um, so if, if you like, <coughs> by the way, I think that, I don't know what RSpec2 comes with for mocking and stubbing, but the flex mock library also sucks. Mocha is a much better mocking and stubbing gem. I made another slide. Uh, <laughs> and I'm here to tell you that if you're using Ruby 1.9, you don't need it, because Ruby 1.9 ships with a library called Minitest. Um, which is kind of a superset of test unit, and you can do the um, describe it blocks just like you can in RSpec. You literally write it the same way, and it's you use the mini test library in Ruby, so you don't have to install the RSpec gem. And if your specs will pretty much work straight away. You have to fiddle with your requires and stuff. Um, and then if you're doing Rails, you can use the shoulda matchers gem which also does add stuff that you can use in test unit too. And it'll give you stuff so you can write your model should belong to some other model. You can just do one-liner macro tests like that to uh, test out all your domain stuff. Um, I didn't feel like getting my wireless working, so I ran rdoc on the mini test directory because I went and found it because it comes with Ruby, which is awesome. You don't have to install gems to get it working. Uh, see, it, that's how you do describe, just like you do in our spec with the description, you get a block. Also, this is a good example of uh, Ruby 1.9 needing some uh, documentation help in some places, like the to-do ones. Yeah, some of these are real funny. Um, <laughs> like this one for the it block. So for some freakish reason, people who write specs don't like class inheritance, so this goes out of its way to make sure that doesn't happen. <laughs> but if you want it, you can use mini tests 
and this is the cool part, you can mix and match between assertions and expectations as much as you want. Um, so in your normal, in Ruby 1.9, in your normal test unit files, you can have your test, 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 just like you normally do, and then start saying describe block and having it before, after set up in your describe blocks, right in line with all your test stuff. So you can start swapping things out piecemeal if you wanted, if you were in test unit. If you're in RSpec, you're screwed. Another reason why RSpec sucks. Sorry. <laughs> can you run Cucumber without RSpec? I don't know. Yes. Yep. Mm -hmm. Definitely. That's good to know. I just my new job. I'm starting. I'm gonna might have to argue that. Yeah, you can definitely use test unit. What were you gonna say? I do. Oh. Yeah. Cool. Um. So. One reason I hate RSpec is I thought writing matchers was asinine. You, know, you thought what? Writing matchers. Yeah. Has anybody else written matchers? It is really special. It's very object oriented, isn't it? <laughs> it's something. Yeah. <laughs> hmm. It's another thing. Uh, RSpec's <coughs> code is really crappy, too. It's like written by a Java guy. <laughs> I mean, obviously, when you read it, it's like class, 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 class. This is a class. This is a wrapper class and factory classes. And it's just, it's stupid. <laughs> um, I said I have strong opinions. I feel like I'm watching Hannity and Combs. This is just, the, this is the, uh, I don't really know what I'm looking at here, so. But, uh, this is just the, oh yeah, this is the unit thing. Um, oh yeah, this is the mocking thing that it comes with. It comes with Ruby 1.9. So it comes with, mini tests comes with a mock thing here. And this is all the code. I mean, there's like two or three ends at the bottom. Like that's it. You get expect and verify. I don't know how it works, but that's the code. It's short, so that's, that's good. You can read it quickly. Yeah, it does. I mean, it's this is basically they basically copied our spec, um, but wrote it themselves. And, um, yeah. So what this does is takes makes it so you can uh, so these assertions work like <coughs> on objects. So just like the R spec matchers, you can say whatever your object is dot must be empty must be instance of. Um, I think it's nicer that that should R spec should be equal to the stuff, the way, the way that works. I think this is a little bit nicer um, API to use. So these are all generated by that code we were just looking at there. By this code, because it infects object with these things. Um, I'm not going to go through all that, but like describe, for example, like the actual method when you say describe in your block, that's all it is. It's really straightforward code because really Ruby doesn't have to be complicated. And if it is, then the person who's doing it, I don't know. I don't have anything to say. <laughs> it doesn't have to be complicated. No strong opinion? No points coming? Yes, I do. Fine. Tutorial. So that's all. Not a presentation. So. so do you have some mini test examples? In nope. Some code? I want to see some stack traces. <laughs> what? Let's see some stack traces. <laughs> Hey, I hate life coding. <laughs> <laughs> I'd rather yeah, have beers. <laughs> so, do you hate R spec because mini test is better, or just because test unit is better, or just that R spec sucks? It's because R spec sucks. Because I, I've, I've just had bad experiences with it. Like every time I've had to use it, it's a pain in the ass to use. It's not straightforward. It's not. It doesn't have that Ruby philosophy of like uh, the principle of least surprise. You know, it's just. You have to read the documentation to remember how to use matchers if you haven't used it in three months. So the built-in test unit is much better. Yeah, I think it is. So I worked, when I worked for uh, the first full-time Rails job I had at a company, we ended up doing just straight test unit and shoulda. And it was really nice. And then I, I left and joined another company and they, everything was in RSpec. And they tested the views, and 
the models and the controllers and the helpers and the migrations with our spec. And it was absurd. So we deleted the view tests. So but it was just a lot of like writing the code twice, essentially. Yeah. Um, but that, that was that was where you know keeping our spec or finding the latest version of our spec, waiting for it to get up to date was annoying. So you end up like if you're on edge risk and you want to use our spec, you might as well just become a committer to our spec too if you want to keep updated to that. Um, and then I don't know, whenever something breaks, it's a pain in the ass to fix it, in my opinion. <laughs> so you can use Cucumber directly with this. Could you use just Capybara directly with this then too? I think, or? I haven't used that, so I don't know. So my strong opinions could be unfounded. So take what I'm saying with a grain of salt. Does um, does that get integration testing abilities? I think our spec has where you can like it actually fill out the forms. Uh huh. Because that's part of our spec Rails. It's because that does all like the controller. Mm -hmm. Session set up and stuff. So, there you go. Point Is there an agenda that does have integration testing like that? Well, Rails has you? integration tests. Huh? It ships with. Yeah. Sorry. Rails has te integration tests that you can use out of the box. Okay. Yeah, I didn't know that. Yeah. Can you jump right on the first bit Yeah. Because the book told me to. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. I don't know. I don't know why it's so widespread, because most people don't like it. So, or is it, wait, is it just because nobody likes testing? Is that what it really is? Pretty much. <laughs> yeah, I, I, from my perspective, it just feels like, like, our spec is the first testing framework I've ever used. Yeah. Uh, and it, to me, it feels like I'm writing things twice as much as I feel like I should be. Like, I... I Good. Well, are you writing your tests first? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Well, it just wow. it just seems like <laughs> I'm impressed. I, I, I'm, I'm wasting time figuring out how to test this when I I, I know how to write it easily. Like I, it, yeah. like yeah. actually doing it takes less time than, than testing for it. Yes. I I will agree that lately, I've so I've been using RSpec for a while, but I still I don't I don't think I really know how to write RSpec tests. <laughs> yeah. Like it's just really cumbersome. Yeah. I eventually yeah. get. Tests passed that I'm pretty sure exercise the code, but I'm not really sure like what steps I took to get there because by the end I just feel like someone punched me in the face several times. <laughs> so I am I, your your rant resonated with me earlier today. So I'm well, very. Do you get a benefit from that though? Like the punching in the face. Well, <laughs> that yeah, plus the press testing. less next time. The, test, the testing is always good. Yes. So, there are so I mean, ultimately, like the, the test the test place will save it. Testing is always good. Testing is always good. Yes. Uh, inefficiently testing, not always good. So I, basically, I feel like, um, of course, I guess if you're building by the hour. <laughs> testing is very good. If you're building by the hour, then like, okay, use our spec because it takes a shit ton of time to figure out how to test stuff. I think to say testing is always good is just wrong because I mean, like, it depends on your context. It's like if you're writing a throwaway project. Like, do you need to test this? Do you need to write automated unit tests for this? It's like no. If the return on investment of writing those tests is high enough, then you should, you know, kind of thing. So I think it's. It's not somewhere what you're getting at. Well, if you tend, tend to keep it, you should write tests. I, I don't disagree with that. Yeah, that's, that's the only problem. Every time I've been told that I was going to write something that was going to be thrown away, that totally went to production two days <laughs> later. <Yep. laughs> and, and retrofitting is a rhymes with which. <laughs> <laughs> had to do it too many times. And not with something as nice as Ruby, but with Java. Which was just Who hates cucumber? <laughs> I I'm with you. I had to go through the getting the step definitions working, really horribly confusing backtraces. Yeah, you spend more time just trying to match up step de definitions than doing any testing. So or shoot yeah. someone, move this button, or rename this button. You know, yeah. you know, everything's broken. Well, that's why I like, yeah. like I would like to use something like this it. with just straight capybara, you know, and it's you're almost like making step definitions. It's just you're not. Taking it the extra step to the, you know, turning it into nice English for business people to read. And you can you know, still write those if you need to, um, if, if that's your actual audience. But it seems like a lot of extra time and a ton of extra files. 
that was so that was one of the premises of premises of our spec right was that ultimately customers could write the tests. That was cucumber, yeah. Because well, yeah, yeah, that's where it's going to read it. Yeah. Does anybody, it? Does anybody have a product yeah, owner so write a cucumber? Does somebody actually write yep. some customers write it? Uh, well, it's not my business, never mind. I'm just well, curious. Maybe yeah, I'll talk to you later. We, we've I, done it. And it works. Yeah, like, we, staff, it's really good for getting people engaged. Like, you, have to, you basically have to get them to, re, you have to rewrite them because they, they're not going to match right. the definitions to, to things and they're, they're using consistent language. But as far as getting them to actually describe what, what they think should happen, yeah, that, that totally works. So, yeah. do you think it would be as effective if you weren't actually using Cucumber, but you asked them to write a, a series of scenarios in the same format, and then you just you know wrote it as something more RSpec and Capybara-ish? No. Okay. Because you can't cycle, really, like with the with Cucumber test, I can rewrite them so that it matches the stuff that we actually have, then send them back and be like, does this still say what you think it should say? Mm. But I can't do that if I'm if I'm translating something they can't read. Okay. She have a direct correlation to interesting. What they write and what works. Well, something completely outside of uh, end user re readability. My favorite thing about Cucumber is I, if I've screwed up and left a field off of view, I may have a test that says if I submit this to this controller, that this action happens. And you know, if I later on delete the doggone thing. That controller test is not going to write, but Cucumber is going to pitch a bitch. So, as a newcomer, like, okay, we hate our spec. Some people like Cucumber. Like, what, what do I use? What should I learn? Just use our spec. Everybody else does. Nobody likes You're the main like everybody else. <laughs> Wait, does anyone hate test unit? Test unit is the way to go. It's, yes. it's really simple. I mean, you, you subclass test case, and, you, and like he even had some code. It's like test. You put the description of your test in quotes, and then in your do, you just say insert some stuff. Yeah. There's a bunch of gems uh, slash plugins also that can add new certain types and, mm -hmm. and stuff like that. So well, you can actually make it really nice. That was something in here. Uh, Ruby 1.9 has a bunch of new assertions. So there's like all these. And it comes with these. Sir block, empty, equal, <laughs> in delta, in epsilon. Yeah. So is that something different? Yeah. It's 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 like it's unit test essentially. Yeah. It's or test unit. It's just been included okay. uh, like, into the core of the of the Ruby language at one point. Yeah. Okay. So it's like because I think you oh, can right. load a mini test gem in Ruby one eight. So what they did in one nine is say that's nice. It's you know, so now ships with it, but. Apparently, a certain not is not the right word. A certain not, well, there's a certain ill. But, well, there's, um, refute. So it calls them refute, which is not strange. Because I'm used to deny, which I think test unit was a certain deny of this. And so now they changed it to refute, which is weird. I just think it's kind of funny that. You know, people used to just do test unit, and then all of a sudden, RSpec and Cucumber came, and it's like everybody shifted over that way. And then now there's like some backlash, and now everybody's kind of shifting back the other way. And I wonder if two years from now, it's going to go to some other thing that's totally different, and everybody is like, oh, this is the new way you should, you have to well, do it. Well, I'm not saying that the way that you write tests in RSpec is bad, because I, th I think it's good. I think having the nested, like, described blocks mm -hmm. are, are good. Um, I don't think having a method called it is, is good. I think that's incredibly asinine. Because I always say it should, because my first word is always should, because you're testing that the code should do something. And I think that's the core of what our spec was all about, was that you're not saying assert 4 plus 4 is 8, you know, or whatever. You're actually like describing in a little bit more closer to English what your code should do. So I think that part of it's good. Um, and you can do that with mini tests in Ruby 1.9. Mm -hmm. my, my complaints are mainly that I think it's slow and the code sucks and it's a pain to use. But I, I, I guess people put up with that anyway, to, just so they can write these, to, you know, write their tests in this nested block style. So. You can do that with shut up. Hmm? You can do that with shut up. Yeah. And that, that's what I really liked before. I had to 
do our spec stuff. If things don't keep shifting, we'll run out of presentations. <laughs> That's a good point. It's all the same. Incidentally, I do think DHH would be very proud of your presentation today. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's really why I gave it. Because I don't want him to give me a phone call. <laughs> no, I think, I mean, I think there's a reason that all the Rails tests are still test unit. Because they're just like, it works, so why bother with something else? Well, that's a good argument, too. But It seems like in all the presentations or demos or things that teach you to teach or teach you to test, use our specs. That's probably why. It's yeah. so quickly because the vocal people were opinionated about it. Mm -hmm. What do you should use it? And when, when you watch it, it seems pretty easy. To, like I haven't done our spec full time, but it seems pretty easy to write. It seems easy to write, and then when you write it and it breaks, <laughs> yeah. what the hell is happening? And then you find out there are 18 different ways that you could write any given test. Yeah. Or if you're like, man, I could really make this syntax better with the match here. Then Two days later, you emerge and you're like, oh, right. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> the two things that I wish that test unit had that I can see the RSpec had are, like you said, the describe blocks. It will feel the scope, like you're set up tear down. Yeah. But then, um, what was I just going to say? I forget. The other thing. The other thing, yeah. <laughs> oh, the uh, should and should not. So you have the same thing for yeah. positive and negative. Yeah, and so I you think don't have to always remember which which one's which. Yeah, so this instead of should people. they have they have must and won't, which I think is kind of odd. Yeah, yeah. So I don't like that. But you can use shoulda has a they split it up into two gems now, and it's kind of it's different than it used to be. But I think one of them you can get that stuff you can get like should and should not stuff back into your normal test unit things. So instead of using assertions, you can write it the same way in test unit. And then this has the describe blocks that you can do before and after, and before each and after each. And I think that's huge, because at one point I had this like code base with all these tests with fixtures with test unit that were just like a nightmare to write tests after some point, because you had to build up all the state. And uh, so those nested things were awesome. What do you use for fixtures? I don't, I use the factory girl now. Okay. So, mm -hmm. a trick question. What do you use for right now? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the good news is that uh, we're arguing about what tool to use to test our code, as yeah. opposed to whether or not we should be testing. Right? <laughs> I can argue about testing too if you want, because I don't think you should have 100% test coverage. Uh, I think that that's not. Uh, do you think that you shouldn't have it, or that that should not necessarily be your ultimate goal? I don't think it's worth the cost to get there. Okay. I think like 80 to 90 percent is good. And the other thing too is it's a false metric. I mean, you can have 100 percent C0 code coverage, which just means that yes, all your code is executing. Right. But there's a hundred different permutations in any given, you know, uh, method parameters and stuff that you're not testing. Mm -hmm. That you could use like a mutation test or something. Oh, that's something else that's awesome about. Uh, I forgot to mention is this will run your tests. Um, it'll randomize them and run them in different orders every time you run it on the command line. So that you, if you've got fixture pollution or whatever, it'll help uncover that. And then it, it tells you a little uh, seed that it used for that randomization so you can reproduce any errors that you had from it, which is very cool. So testing is better in Ruby 1.9 out of the box. Yes. Today's been like future day. Three point Rails 3.1, Ruby 1.9, and which I know Ruby 1.9 has been around forever, but nobody's used it. So why is that? It's not required. I know that is an awesome question because, like, typically, I feel like Rubyists and Rails people or whatever tend to jump to the newest thing, like our spec. Assume you know, like, oh, look, this is new, which means it's sexy, so let's all use this. But then, like, 1.9 came out, and like, no, no, we're well, just going to sit here. We got tired of stuff breaking. Yeah. yeah it, it, was so, it was so way down, like, you know, people didn't, people didn't upgrade their gems, and syntax was different, and it was very confusing. It was very confusing for a long time to figure out what version you're even supposed to use. It was just, it was a huge yeah. uphill thing. Because 1.9.0 was, like, a 
not considered a stable release, but 191 was stable. Right. right. But then someone came out and was like, do not use 191. It is horrible. <laughs> and yeah, and there were a series of bugs, which were not confidence inducing. And then RE came out, and everyone was like, well, RE is pretty fast. Why don't we just use that instead? And yeah, kind of. So well, if they had called it Ruby 2.0, like just called it Ruby 2.0, do you think more people would have moved to it? Does it run Rails yet? No, it was. I mean, the reason not to move to it initially was bugs. Yeah. yeah. So they should call it 2.1. <laughs> <laughs> it was shenanigans. <laughs> the whole thing was shenanigans. It's got all the 